My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, how much has Allah given us as well? In the livestock and animals, Allah said in the Quran, look at the cattle. How He gives you pure milk from between, intestines and blood and feces inside the stomach. He gives you pure milk that is tasteful and healthy for you. Another ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, we deny all of this and what He has given us. We forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on top of that, has given us this beautiful deen, this way of life. Allah says in the Quran, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم. Today I have completed your religion, your way of life. وأتممت عليكم نعمتي. And have com completed my blessing upon you. What is this blessing? The deen, this way of life. This is a ni'mah. I have completed my ni'mah upon you. Meaning, this deen is the greatest ni'mah and the complete ni'mah that anyone can ever wish for and hope for. If you really follow it. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And I am pleased with this religion of Islam submission for you as your way of life. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what is this deen? Why is it such a blessing? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that this deen brings us life. It brings us guidance away from what can harm us and takes us away from those who do harm us and makes us become conscious and aware of the right from the wrong, which path to take and which paths not to take. There's no need to research too much anymore. Listen to what Allah says in the Quran. وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ تَبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ أَن تَمِيلُوا مَيْلًا عَظِيمًا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَن يُخَفِّفَ عَنكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Allah wants to forgive you. But those who are astray, they always want to mislead you. Those who follow their desires and their temptations and their own lusts, they want to lead you astray from it. And to go far away from this beautiful way of life which is good for you and them. Allah, through this deen, He wants to lessen burdens and harm off you. Even doctors today, and I come from a biomedical background, doctors say to you today, go to any doctor, to any medical practitioner, to any researcher, to any professor of science, and he will tell you, or she will tell you, that the best medicine is what? Is prevention. The best medicine is prevention. Prevention is better than cure. Allah is the one who before them brought us the guidance of how to prevent ourselves from something. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent a drop of alcohol from drinking it, even though it won't get you drunk? Because He knows the effects of it, that later on it can be addictive. And it can cause you to drink lots of alcohol, which makes you drunk and corruption on earth. Why did He prevent us from, the ki from kissing a girl which we are not allowed, to, not allowed to, or looking at her? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this can lead on to other problems. Why and why and why? So this ni'mah of Islam is the best thing that could ever happen to anyone's life. Even in a spouse relationship. Know my dear brothers and sisters, that if there is any conflict between a husband and wife, it's only because one or both of them has done something haram. Abadan. Because everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has advised us will only bring the husband and wife together. Listen to this ni'mah of Islam. In which religion, in which society, in which culture, in which civilization does it command the man to give a bridal gift to the woman and she has a right to do whatever yani she pleases with it in the halal of course and the husband hasn't got the right to take it or ask for it and it's a debt upon his neck no matter what happens. And that if she dies and he doesn't pay it, he must give it to her heirs, her father, her mother, her brothers, her sisters, her, the ones who will inherit her. Who has that right? Except in Islam. Which one commands the man to work but doesn't command the woman to work? And if she wants to, she can, with her husband's permission. And if she does, her money is hers. Is hers. She is not obliged to pay it. Which religion tells you that if the man divorces his wife, 
for the next three menstrual periods he must provide her with shelter and wealth, and that for the rest of his life he has to look after the children, not her, even if they live with her. Which religion says that? Except for Islam. Which religion tells you that if your enemy that is fighting and holds a sword against you, or is shooting at you, comes to you and says to you, please, let me, give me shelter at your home, comes out of the army, comes to you, after he had shot many of your friends and your brothers and sisters in Islam, and says to you, give me shelter in your home, and commands the Muslim to give him shelter. This is in the Qur'an. And if any of the disbelievers who are fighting you, asked you to give them shelter, you must give them shelter. Which one says that? And then when they go back home, they become normal fighters to you as they were before. The same fighter. Which one says that? Which cultural civilization gives us the na'mah, the blessings of a daughter? When in many Arab cultures, for example, even in many other cultures, even till today, when you have a girl, everybody's quiet. And we have that saying in Lebanese. When everybody's quiet in a room, you say, Khil'at binat. <laughs> a girl is born. When a boy is born, everybody rejoices. Which one brings the ni'mah and says, for any man, or parent, sorry, any man or woman, who has three daughters who they raise on righteousness, there will be a guard for them from hellfire on the day of judgment. Even one daughter. Did not mention the boy. Not the boy, just the girl. Only the girl. The ni'mah of Islam, I mean, we cannot, there's too much to mention actually, about a family life, about relationships, about a community and a society, for yourself, for your health. The other day I said to my students, it is makruh to lie down on your stomach and sleep on your stomach. They say, sir, oof, everything's haram, even lying on your stomach? I said to them, first of all, it's not haram, it's makruh, meaning disliked. And the reason why it's disliked is because it can harm you physically. Some of the things that can happen to you is that you get backaches. If you are overweight and you sleep on your stomach, you will pressure the intestines and will hurt your lungs and will hurt your heart. Don't say, don't take it from me, take it from what the doctor said. But we already said this 14 centuries ago. And having said this, I just want to show you something else. You know what a Muslim does to a fly when it lands in your food and dies in there? You know what, we know what the Prophet ﷺ told us to do? He said, dip the fly in your food, dip it. Another hadith, dip it three times to make sure that it's all dipped. <laughs> and then throw the fly out and eat the rest of the food. And don't throw the food out because this is a blessing as well. My student said to me, Ugh, sir, what do you mean dip the fly and throw it? This is disgusting. I said, this, it's quite the opposite, this is a blessing. So what are you talking about dipping a fly? It's been in, in feces and stuff like that comes and you've got to dip it in your food. I said, yes, it's a blessing. And you, you don't know, but Allah knows. Guess what? The Prophet ﷺ said, obviously, because a wing carries the bacteria and it drops it, while another wing or parts of its body carry the antibiotic. A few months ago, I don't know if you know about this, because I, I researched a lot about these areas. A professor or a researcher, a woman in America, has discovered something. She said, this is her research about the fly. She said, we were wondering one day, how can a fly live in all these different bacteria and land there and still survive after that? How come that if a human were to attract, for example, filth like feces or urine, we know that medically, if you, if you don't wash your hands or if it's an unhygienic environment, you can develop hepatitis A, B, C, or C, or even D. And some of them can kill you. Yet a fly survives. How does it survive? So she thought, maybe it has an antibiotic that we can extract from it and put into the human blood so that we can also develop our immune system. So she went and, and they went and, this, and researched the fly. They discovered, my dear brothers and sisters, that the fly has an antibiotic within its body and outside on its skin, on the outside of its body. Wallahi, this is a research really there, it's factual. I can probably, for anyone who wants it, email me, I'll, I'll send it to you, inshallah. The most remarkable thing about it is, how do we extract it from the fly? You know what she said? The only way that we know, the easiest way and the most 
appropriate way or the convenient way is to dip it in liquid. And then, after we dip it in the liquid, we extract that liquid and we can probably inject it into the human blood and probably develop an immune system, just like a vaccine. Just like they extract the poison of a snake, such as in India and other places, and they inject it into the child and develops an immunity towards certain snakes or certain venoms from different spiders and tarantulas. And if you would like to know, also, um, they, they take the urine of a horse as well for women with menopause and they inject it in her as well. She doesn't know that, you see. But they do that and it creates an antibiotic and it's a good thing for her immune system as well. Islam is a blessing, but we just don't know that. So let us not whine about these things and complain about them. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who've received calamities and whine about it, He replied this, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولَ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ did man assume that they will enter paradise so quickly and easily like that? And when we bring them the stories of the people before them, they went through trials and calamities, a lot of harm came to them, a lot of masatum al like hardship. Really, they felt it, it clothed them. And misfortune, wazulzilu, the earth was shaken underneath their feet until their messengers and their people used to say, when is Allah's victory going to come? Allah said, behold, just be patient. The victory of Allah is coming soon for you. Don't worry. So this is why Khubayb radiallahu anhu came to the Prophet ﷺ once and he uncovered his shirt after trying to go and give da'wah to a people. And he found burns of holes. Burns and which, which made holes in his back. He said, Ya Rasulullah, crying and wailing. I went there to give them da'wah and they grabbed me and they took my shirt off and they heated rocks on the fire and dragged my, dragged my back on the rocks until it developed into these holes in my back. This is really, this is extreme. The Prophet ﷺ stood up and he was kneeling down on the Kaaba and then he stood up, sat up straight and he said, إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ You are a people who are hastening for Allah's victory. Be patient, Allah is training us. There will be a time. There were people before you. One of them will be brought in front of the people and they will bring the chainsaw and saw him in half from top to bottom just for them to leave this is their call and they would not leave it 